Hi, it's me, Buck. Your BMN pacifist. He's got a gun. David McDing. A few years ago, I got a nice flight stick so I could finally enjoy all the flight sims I had. It's still the most fun thing I've done. Well, come on now. That was as light as could be. The biggest hurdle for me was keeping track of everything around me. I had already spent $150 for my stick. I wasn't prepared to spend more on one little accessory. That's why I return, for I have acquired the magnum opus of cheap tracking. You only need two things, webcam and open track. You don't need a fantastic webcam, but you do need some quality. I use a Logitech C270. It's 720p, 30fps, and has a 55 degree diagonal field of view. It's $30, and it works. OpenTrack has been the poor man's solution for millennia. All you have to do is use their built-in face tracker, and wham, you can look around your cockpit, or your cabin, or your space. Got him. I use the neural net tracker input, free tracker output, and a Stella filter. If you don't know your webcam specs, you don't need to. Default works fine, but I wanted it to work better. If you're getting low video FPS, open the tracker settings and lower the resolution to 480. When that doesn't fix your FPS, go to the tracker's camera settings and lower the exposure. Now you will suddenly have all your frames. You can readjust your gain, brightness, and contrast to fix the image. It won't affect FPS. For the output, modify the free track option. Change it to track IR only. Both is usually fine, but some games get confused with both. Your filter is subjective. I prefer Acela. Some seem like they'd work best with more precise equipment. It's just different solutions for the same problem. Once you have everything working and calibrated right, you can spend the rest of your week tweaking the mapping. I have a few tips that have really helped me. If you find yourself fighting to find the center of your view, create a dead zone. Your body has a lot of natural movements, and sometimes you don't want those movements to be translated into the game. Cutting out the input at the start is the best way I've figured to fix that. It's a little odd and kind of snappy, but for Arma, it's really useful. Also, I can look a lot higher than I can down, so I set up a heavy asymmetric curve for it. Now I can comfortably look at my dash without dislocating my neck. Another tip, create profiles. Most flight sims allow total freedom around my cockpit, so I use everything I've got. But some games need a little more tender love and care. You can even enable auto detection, so you don't have to remember swapping. There are two other options you may want to play with. I use the custom center pose the most. It's nice for fixing a slouch or just finding a more comfortable spot in your virtual space. I never used relative translation much, but you might. Basically, your movements are relative to your starting center point. So if you lean left and look right, you'll look over your right shoulder. And that's it. It's really that easy. Oh. Opening new doors for unique gameplay experiences. <sighs> really wish I still had a plane. I hope I can sleep complete tonight, knowing you can do this all on your own. I spent the last couple months playing around with head tracking. It's now become a necessity for me when I play certain games. There's nothing more immersive than actually watching your gunner fire on targets through a hole in your glass. All right, right gunner, light them up. Light, light them up. Light them up. And, oh, oh geez. Would you look at that time? All right, I gotta head out. Those milk and smokes aren't gonna buy themselves. I'll stop by to check on you again real soon. I promise. So be good, or I'll never come back. Oh wait, did I get him? Oh!